Hello, so I'm going to give you a, a quick video on how to get started with Visual Ruby. Um, for more information, go to visualruby.net. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing I'd like to tell you is how to run Visual Ruby, which is you type VR and enter. Um, that will run it. You can also type VR and slash path to project, and that you know, obviously path to project is wherever the folder that you want to open. Um, we're just going to run it in the, the current folder, which is my Visual Ruby folder right now. Um, that's going to open up uh, Visual Ruby, and it's actually going to be editing the Visual Ruby project itself because Visual Ruby is written in Visual Ruby. So um, here we have this. Uh, let me give you a quick rundown of the buttons. Uh, the refresh button will refresh this tree. Um, that comes in handy when you're when you uh, have created a Glade file, and uh, and right now you see there's vr document .glade. Um, I'm going to create a Glade file real quick. I'm right clicking on vr tabs. I'm going to say edit Glade file, which is going to make this Glade file vr tabs .glade. And then I'm just going to uh, save it real quick. And um, so now in this here with this VR document glade, there should be a VR tabs glade. So I'm going to click refresh, and there's VR tabs glade. Um, Glade's a separate program from Visual Ruby. So when Glade creates a file, um, you need to create the re to click the refresh button just to let uh, just to update this tree so it appears in the tree. Um, it's actually not that important, but whatever. Um, so now I'm just going to delete that because it's just a file we created to show you that. Um, the uh, Open Project button is the next button here. Um, I'm going to click the Open Project button, and it's going to show a list of all the projects that I have on my machine. Um, now, uh, you have the option of selecting any of these uh, project like for example coin flip here that will open up the um, the project I did in the first video and uh, well what I want to show you here is I'm going to create a new project so I'm going to go back to open project and uh, I'm going to uh, select this button here it says select folder now in the select folder um, you're, you'll be able to select uh, any folder you like um, and it will open it up as a project. But if you open up an empty folder, then it will actually create a, a, a brand new project in that folder. So that's what I'd like to show you. Um, I'm going to click Create Folder up here in the top right, and it's going to highlight this text. And I'll just call this um, example uh, for the sake of argument. Okay. Um, now what this does is it it creates a folder called example and you can see obviously when you create a folder there's nothing in it. So when you have this screen with nothing in it then click open and it will open up this uh, example folder and there will be a um, skeleton file in there. It's actually like a scaffold of, uh, and it's there to help you um, get started. Um, so the next button I'd like to show you is this Run button, and that um, that will actually run this program. So I'm going to click it, and you can see this scaffold program here that's in your folder um, is just a little Hello World program. Okay. Now when you click the Run button, the way it knows what to run um, is is listed here in Tools and Settings. Okay. So if you go to Tools and Settings then you'll see that this path here or this command here is what it runs when you run the run button. So when I click this run button it says it issues on the command line ruby main.rb so it's running a file called main.rb so I'm going to save that. Um, you'll see here is the main file right here in our project tree so that's the file that it's running and if you click on it you can see what it does is it makes an instance of my class and it just runs that um, and it shows it on the screen. Okay, so um, so you can change that command to be whatever you want and sometimes you'll have a few a few different um, 
files in here and, and you can alternate between them if you like. Um, sometimes you want to test something, so you'll make the run button execute that file. Okay, um, I'll give you a quick rundown here on uh, this comment button. Well, first of all, the save button, that's self-explanatory. It will just save the current, the, whatever tab is open, it will save that file. Um, comment. Uh, it's a bulk commenter. You can highlight um, as many lines as you want. If you press comment, then you'll see it, it marks them as a comment line. Um, and likewise, uncomment will uncomment the line. Uh, you can also indent and undent and in, unindent in the same way. Um, here's indent. You see, as you press, as you click indent, it's just going to indent whatever's highlighted, and unindent will bring it back. So we want it about like that, and you just make your code look good. Um, here's save backup. Um, okay, it's asking us, do we want to save changes? Because we've made the, we, I just indented that. Um, text so it thinks this is all changed. So I'll say save changes. Now it says files backed up to home Eric. So that's what happened when I clicked the save backup button. Okay, um, that's all good. It all worked. It saved a file that has the date and the time of this of this project and has all the contents in it. But I don't like that it saved it to my home folder. So I want to change that. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to tools and settings again. And then I'm going to uh, change, here's my backup path, is home Eric. So I don't want that. I, want, I, have, a, I have a specific folder that's sort of out of sight, out of mind um, for all my backup files because um, you don't want them cluttering up your home folder. So I will go to that. Here's my backup folder. And you can see it has, this is what the backup files look like. Um, they look like that. So. Uh, so, but right now we're just selecting the folder, which is B VR backup to be our target of our backups. So now this says VR backup. I'm going to click save. So now when we click save backup, it backs them up to that folder. Okay, and that's very useful because um, when you go to open project, okay, um, you can actually go back and uh, look up these old versions. Okay, so I'm clicking this show backup button and it's showing me all these backups that I've already made. Okay, so um, I don't want to actually open any of those. So I'm just going to close that out. Um, now, here's another thing is the find button. Uh, you guys know about this already. We're going to scan for the text show window and then here you know, it's going to come up with this, and this is like a link here. And when you click on it, it's going to find show window for you. Okay, usually there's more entries there, and you can click. Um, one of the really nice things about this program is it checks for errors, or it it doesn't check for errors, but it it, it will uh, help you tremendously uh, find your errors. Okay, and very quickly find your errors. Like what I'm doing here is I'm making an error per on purpose in my code. This is a valid line, hello world. Okay, I'm going to take out the equal sign. Now this line um, is no good. Okay, it's going to cause an error. Um, I'm also going to put in a string of garbage into my file right there, okay? That's also not valid Ruby syntax. Okay, so now when I click the run button, we're going to expect an error, okay? So let me um, close these files and we're going to save changes. Um, just to show what's going on. So now we have everything closed. We're going to click the run button. Okay, it doesn't run the program because it found a problem. Okay, down here in this window, you'll see in the output of the program that it has this found a problem on line 10 and it jumped to here. So I'm going to go to line 10 and I'm going to add the equal sign back. Now this line here is valid again. So we're going to try the run button again. Whoops, another problem. Okay. So now it's highlighting this, this bunch of garbage. So I'm going to take that out, fix that, hit the run button again, and now it runs. Okay. Now that's going to speed you up tremendously because you don't have to go looking up line numbers or anything like that. It's just going to jump directly to the spot that has the problem. Okay. Um, now there's only a couple other things I'd like to show you. Um, one thing is you can make R docs. I'm going to right click on this and create R docs in this folder. Um, there's a separate video for that, so I'm going to refer you to that. That's on the website. Uh, and 
rdocs and then there's there's also complete stuff for gems you can upload download gems um, here are remote gems these are the ones i published you also have this create gem spec file which will create a gem spec file for your um, for your program but there's a separate video on that as well so those so i'd urge you to take a look at those tutorials for more on that and other than that, I think we covered most everything. Um, uh, to get more information, go to visualruby.net. Okay, there's tutorials, there's, there's all kinds of information there. Okay, so good luck.